Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Westmoreland taxi operator shot dead. The Westmoreland police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the shooting death of a man in Lockwood Return on Saturday, June 18. The deceased has been identified as 45-year-old Conrad Luton Carter, a taxi operator of Wuton District in the parish. Reports are that about 9 p.m. residents heard explosions and summoned the police. On their arrival, Carter was found in a Toyota Boxy motor car. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Carter's sister, Kimon Webster, told reporters that she is surprised that her brother was killed in that manner. Miss surprised that I know something women did expect. He is humble and run taxi and doing painting sometime at this joint Webster shared. Webster was home anticipating her brother's arrival as he had promised to take her to a party. We are calling him and now get him cause him supposed to carry me and him daughter go on party. So me tell him daughter to call him girlfriend and ask if she see him and she says she no see him. Webster said she later got news that he had an accident and was pinned down in the vehicle. But she did not believe that report. She then got another call that he was shot and succumbed to his injuries. Webster said that when she visited the scene, his vehicle was seen crashed in a utility pole and he was found lying on his side at the back of the vehicle with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the head and neck. She theorizes that he was also robbed as his phone was missing and he was found with only for $100. Clinging to hope, search for a popular businessman enters third day. The search to locate a popular business owner in Helsha St. Catherine entered its third day on Monday with family and friends of 71-year-old Nehemiah Thompson calling for support from the police and other local authorities. Relatives said they have been left disappointed over the fact that they reported the matter and are yet to see police providing any form of assistance. We searched a large section of Helsha on Sunday and are planning to continue, said a relative who believes that help from the canine division of the Jamaica Constabulary Force could boost their efforts tremendously. There are also reports that more business operators from Helsha Beach and surrounding areas are expected to join in the efforts. Reports are that Thompson went on one of his regular trips in the hilly sections of Helsha Heights to collect firewood and has since failed to return. Tammy Chin and Wayne Marshall welcome their baby girl. Tammy Chin and husband Wayne Marshall have welcomed their fourth child and only daughter Ivy Arrow Mitchell expressing joy at her arrival. Tammy Chin shared the amazing news in an Instagram post with adorable photos of her sons holding the newest addition to the family. Our littlest love has come earthside. We are all overjoyed at her arrival and looking forward to this next beautiful chapter, she captured the photos, adding that the baby was born on June 16, 2022. Her post was immediately flooded with congratulatory messages from followers. It's going to be a beautiful ride. I am welcome outside. Beauty Queen, Yandy Phillips wrote. Oh my, congrats guys, Camilla McDonald commented. Literally crying congratulations, media personality, Debbie Burson said. In January of this year, the couple announced that they were expecting their fourth child together via their popular YouTube channel, Meet the Mitchells. That exciting news was top in February when they shared that they were expecting a girl. And just like that, our world got turned upside down in the best way possible. We can't wait to meet our littlest love, our daughter, Tammy captioned a photo on Instagram of her family holding up pink balloons. The couple has three boys together, with the youngest born in January 2019, but had also expressed their hope for a daughter. Wayne has an older son from a previous relationship. Two killed in St. James crash Two people were killed in a motor vehicle crash along the Rose Hall Main Road in St. James early yesterday morning. They have been identified as 23-year-old Roger Grant of Greenwood Road in Kingston and 24-year-old Daniel Bowen of Scathering Hall in Montego Bay in the parish. The police report that about 12.15 a.m., both victims were traveling in a white Toyota Boxy bus from the direction of Falmer towards Montego Bay. On reaching a section of the roadway, Bowen, who was reported behind the steering wheel, lost control of the vehicle and slammed into the back 
of a Toyota Axio motor car that was in front of him. The drivers of both vehicles lost control resulting in the motor car exiting the dual carriageway and the boxy bus crashing in a huge tree. Bourne and Grant, along with the driver of the Axio, received injuries and were taken to the Connor Regional Hospital, where they were pronounced dead. The other driver was treated. Jealous boyfriend could serve 13 years for killing lover. A man who last year stabbed his girlfriend during a domestic dispute that involved jealousy in Cascade St. Anne has pleaded guilty to the crime and been ordered to serve up to 23 years in prison. Javel Lindo, a former of Cascade, was initially charged with the murder of 31-year-old Kenny Reed, a bartender of Fraser District, also in Cascade. However, Lindo, who is said to be in his 20s, pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter in May of this year. During his sentencing last week, presiding judge Justice Simone Wolfries ordered him to serve 23 years in prison. But she ordered that he should serve 13 years and 5 months before being eligible for parole consideration. This after she considered the time he spent in custody on remand and his admission of guilt, among other mitigating factors. It was reported that on February 6 last year, Linda went to a bar where he saw Reed speaking to another man and an argument developed between the two. The woman later left the bar and headed to her apartment and Linda pursued her. Another argument later developed between the couple at the premises. Subsequently, a knife was reportedly used by Lindo to stab Reed several times. She was pronounced dead at hospital, while her then 24-year-old alleged attacker turned himself into the police. He was charged following a question and answer session. At the time of the killing, head of the St. Anne Police Superintendent Dwight Powell told reporters that the indication of the killing resulted from a domestic dispute between a man and his girlfriend instigated by jealousy. St. Catherine residents urged to cooperate with security forces. Commissioner of Police Major Anthony Anderson is urging the public to exercise patience and comply with the security forces as they carry out enhanced operations in St. Catherine, for which a public state of emergency SOE has been declared. Anderson stated that within the boundaries of the SOE, which went into effect on Friday, June 17, after an announcement by Prime Minister Andrew Holness, the suit of operations have undertaken will see increased presence and movements of the security forces. We will attempt to manage the impact of our activities on persons when about their normal business. However, there are likely to be some disruption and delays, and we ask for your patience and understanding as we collectively respond to the violence in St. Catherine, he said. The police commissioner advised that the public could assist by complying with the security officers at the checkpoints, adhering to the curfew guidelines, and notifying the Jamaica Constabulary Force of any breaches of professional conduct by members. For persons residing outside of St. Catherine, please advise us, if you see persons turning up in your communities, that you may have concern about, he said, noting that the public can call the JCF tip line at 811 Police Emergency at 119 or Crime Stop at 311 to provide information. Chief of Defense Staff, where Admiral Antoinette Wimscoman reiterated the Commission's voice for patients, pointing out that the purpose of these operational activities is not to inconvenience citizens but rather to add a robust element of security for law abiding citizens while we work earnestly to rid the communities of criminal elements. We therefore Ask the citizens who live, work, or travel within the areas impacted by the SOE corporate with the members of the security forces on the ground. We are all working towards a common goal of making Jamaica a safer place, and this can only be achieved through a unified effort. So I endorse and reinforce that the words of the Commission of the Police to ask residents to engage us throughout their various means of providing information to assist in ridding your communities of crime and violence, she said. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.